Over the years, farmers in Jamaica have suffered significantly from the effects of both natural and man-made disasters. These events include heavy rainfall associated with flooding and land slippage, hurricanes and storms, bushfire, agricultural drought, and pest outbreak. The occurrence of tropical storms and cyclones in the Caribbean and North Atlantic Basin has risen sharply since 1995, with a doubling of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes. There has been a marked increase in hurricanes affecting Jamaica since 2004, and six storm events between 2002 and 2010, resulting in $74 billion in losses to the Jamaican economy. Climate data records over the past 30 to 50 years document a general warming trend in the Caribbean. Rains are being punctuated by periods of greater intensity and flash flooding, followed by longer dry spells. These disaster events do not just represent a problem for Jamaica, but a global one. We've often heard about climate change, but what does climate change have to do with agriculture? Let's hear what the scientists have to say. When we think about climate change, really what we are thinking about is long-term changes in measures of climate. Now we know, in, for example, in Jamaica, we associate those measures of climate to be temperature and we think of rainfall. So what we're thinking about is changes in these things that happen over long periods of time. So we make a little distinction. So we're not talking about weather, which is what happened yesterday or what happened, to what will happen tomorrow but we're talking about changes that have either have happened over long periods of time or will continue to happen as we go into the future. All of these have an impact on the agricultural sector. And you can talk about the direct impact and you can talk about the indirect impact. So if you think about the changes in temperature and rainfall, um, if you just take those changes alone, they are and all the aspects that agriculture encompasses, <laughs> you know, both the plant aspects of agriculture, also the animal aspects of agriculture, or the forestry aspects of agriculture. Changes in temperature can change the whole physiology aspects of plants and animals. And so you expect that it will have that kind of significant impact. But if you couple changes in temperature and rainfall, that now will impact things like soil and, and the with the quality of the soil that you have and what areas will be suitable for agriculture as you go in the future and what crops will be suitable for agriculture as you go in the future. And if you think about things like hurricanes and stronger winds, you know, you're talking about what crops will be able to withstand those kinds of extreme weather conditions. So you can think about the direct impacts, but you don't want to forget the indirect impacts as well. On, on agriculture. So agriculture depends a lot on storage, on transportation, on energy, and you can't divorce yourself from the fact that climate change will impact the energy costs associated with agriculture. First of all, we accept um, climate change as a reality. Over the last decade or so, we have had almost every year either a major storm event with catastrophic results, in particularly in the eastern areas, as well as drought. Part of our response to climate change is to make sure <coughs> that we make agriculture less dependent on rainfall. So over the last four to five years, we have installed massive irrigation systems in South St. Elizabeth, um, in St. James, in Yalas, in St. Catherine. And uh, we are also very active in the installation of rainwater harvesting systems. In our irrigation system, for instance, we are also trying to install solar panels um, to cut down on electricity usage. At our research station, we're doing all kinds of research, come up with more climate-resistant varieties of different crops. We are working with the World Bank and the IDB to set up a parametric insurance model to ensure that our farmers can quickly get back on their feet after a disaster episode. Disaster has a significant impact on our agricultural sector. 
since over 200,000 farmers mainly practice agriculture and slopes. And so there's a big impact on soil erosion, crop damage, and other structural damages such as roads and riverbeds and so on. What RADA has been doing is that it has developed a committee, the Agriculture Risk Management Committee, which operates in all 13 land authority and which is linked into the National Committee. We have been training farmers in best practices, in technological transfer. RADA has done significant work in the maintenance of roadways and gully banks and check dams across these slopes. We have also monitored the pest infestation in order to uh, mitigate them, uh, to keep them at a certain level. We have also monitored other diseases to keep the pathogenicity at a level where we can still make uh, an income and a living for our farmers from these incursions. We have also developed protected agriculture. By that, we have done mulching in open fields and we have developed shale houses and greenhouses so that these farmers can produce in drought. Now let's find out how these extreme weather events can affect us and what we can do to reduce the impact. Agricultural drought. This happens when there is not enough water available for adequate crop and forage growth. What can farmers do to minimize the effects of agricultural drought? One, mulching. This is the use of materials such as dry grass to cover the soil around the plant root, thus reducing evaporation and retaining soil moisture. 2. Water harvesting, whether from rain, rivers or springs. Whenever water is available, one must store it as much as possible, especially on rainy days. 3. Drip irrigation. This is a control mechanism of applying water to crops with the use of drip hoses. This reduces your water bill, reduces weed growth and there are many other positive benefits. 4. Crop forage selection. For example, planting of drought-tolerant crops such as cassava during drought season. 5. Protection of watersheds. These are natural, undisturbed areas that are normally covered with forested trees. 6. Never light fires outdoors in dry conditions, even if it seems safe to do so. 7. Do not smoke on your farm. 8. Douse lighted coal and firewood with water after use. What can farmers do to reduce the effects of heavy rainfall? In Jamaica, we experience heavy rains between May and June and then again from September to November. The effects of which can be wide and varied depending on whether you farm on the hillside or on the flatlands. Heavy rainfalls can cause flooding and landslides, destroying crops, homes, livestock, and other things of importance to your livelihood. Flooding will occur on the plains or low-lying areas. Therefore, farmers need to construct proper field drainage and maintain them. Ensure that natural waterways are free from debris and are not disturbed. Practice raised bed farming. Bring animals to higher ground. Use recommended construction design for animal houses. For example, raised goat house. One block height around poultry house foundation. Construct animal houses on higher ground. Secure feed and pesticides in dry areas. Over the years, you have been prone to a lot of flooding and some instances of drought. To combat the flooding, we have dug a lot of trenches and do a lot of plowing to raise the land to stop the impact of the flooding. We also build, raise the goat houses to protect the animals. In instances of drought, 
we drip the land and I have a forage bank where I do a lot of cutting and carrying and we also do trapping and we drip that forage bank so we always have adequate supply of forage there to come. We have a combination of king grass, mulberry and moringa in there. Landslides normally occur in the hilly areas and can lead to destruction of farmland, houses, crops, animals and humans. Let's hear how one farmer deals with the problem of land slippage. Antipat, you have a creative way of dealing with land slippage. Tell us about it. When we trim the trees, we lay the, behind the bamboo, we lay the, the, the limbs on the ground. That holds the dirt and it strains the water in the contour, which helps me for irrigation. Then behind that, we plant the, the couscous grass to help to hold the soil. And then now we have the, the pineapples to plants to help to hold the soil and the farm. That's how I deal with holding the soil, that it don't wash away in the road. Good land husbandry practices must be employed when farming on hillside land. Land husbandry practices such as agroforestry. This is the integration of agricultural activities and forest timber activities on the same plot of land. For example, alley cropping, which is the planting of trees on the contour line and cultivating crops as cabbage between the rows of trees. Live barriers. This can be created by using vitivira or couscous grass or pineapples to plant along the contours of the land and then farm between each barrier. Log or bamboo barriers, stone barriers, preservation of forested areas. When this is done, runoff is reduced and soil structure is kept bound by the roots of the trees. Preservation of natural waterways. Constructing houses and farms in natural waterways will force the water to travel a different route which will result in soil and land movement. Proper drainage construction. Drainage is important to remove excessive runoff out of the farmland. Practice minimum tillage. This is the practice of little or no plowing. For example, spot plowing and using a fork to plow. Hurricanes and tropical storms are normally associated with strong winds that seriously affect farmers and their livelihood. Here are some tips on how you can prevent or reduce wind damage. Pruning of trees. This is the removal of excess limbs off the trees to reduce surface area and allow light and wind to travel freely through the plants. This will allow fruit trees to produce better quality fruits. Propping or guying of banana and plantain. Banana farmers can also plant the Fia banana variety as this is much shorter than the traditional banana varieties, have stronger trunks and is therefore more resistant to high winds. Wind barriers. This is the planting of trees around farmland whereby the trees are used to break the impact of wind on the crops. Selection of the type of crops to plant is also important. For example, the planting of low-lying crops like ginger during the hurricane season. The impact of wind damage on these crops is generally low. Secure projectiles. Farm equipment such as spray pans and water pans must be safely stored. Reap all mature crops. Reduce poultry stocks. Ensure you have sufficient supply of medications, pesticides and fertilizers. Greenhouse farmers are encouraged to construct houses using locking profile as this will aid in easy removal of the plastic and mesh to prevent wind damage. The crops can be placed to lie flat on the ground and anchored properly to prevent wind damage. So now you're informed on how to reduce the impact of disasters on your farm and how to be climate smart. Just remember three things. Practice makes perfect. Prevention is better than cure. And, a hardiest picnic, feel the most pain. Remember that.